Welcome to Table Talk Live, a Mahjong-centric variety show. With me on this episode is Debbie Barnett, owner-operator of School of American Mahjong and author of Unlocking the Secrets of American Mahjong. On this episode, we're going to be sharing our top 10 confusing and complicated National Mahjong League rules. If you have input, your own ideas, or questions, write them in caps. That way the moderators can help us answer those questions and address your comments. And also, if you hear something that you want to take with you as a jewel of knowledge along this little journey, write hashtag keeper, and then that little jewel of information that you're gonna take with you. That's something new I'm trying to add to Table Talk Live. Hashtag keeper. I'm going to go ahead and bring Debbie on. Let's welcome her to the show. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Hi, Michelle. Can everybody hear Debbie okay? Let's see. Hello, everybody. I can hear you. YouTube is working fine and has been. Okay, thank you, Estelle. Okay. Hi, hi, the Evelyn. Okay, good. So you're seeing the chat then? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm, very good. Okay, I think everybody can hear me. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing the notes that Debbie and I have gathered on everything that we're going to be talking about in this episode. So you can look for a link to that in the video description after the episode airs. So it'll take me um, a little, a few minutes to pull it together in a, in a format that'll be uh, in a PDF that I'll upload to my Facebook page. And then I'll put the link in the video description. In the links in the video description right now is Debbie's Ask the Teacher Facebook page a link to the American or the School of American Mahjong. Also, I have a link to the National Mahjong League store where you can purchase this booklet, Mahjong Made Easy. This is their official guidebook for American Mahjong players using National Mahjong League rules. We're going to be talking a lot about this in the episode tonight. Oh, let's see. Somebody said, if you buy the book, do you get the updates as rules change? Well, you have to repurchase the book. This is the 2020 edition. And in between and then, that, you have the, also, I'm sorry, Debbie, go ahead. No, I was going to say, in between, they have, I think you were pulling out the Q&A. Yeah, they yes. They have their um, newsletter that goes out every year. Yes. So if you purchase your American Mahjong card from the league, you will all automatically be on the mailing list for their bulletin, which will have any clarifications to rules. And sometimes they'll announce a new rule between publications of Mahjong Made Easy. Also, there'll be a link down there for Sloperama. Sloperama has a lot of excellent FAQs that address a lot of complicated situations that arise when we play American Mahjong using National Mahjong League rules. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, let's start with our first item. And we're both going to be reading from this list so that we don't miss anything. So if we look to the side or look down, it's because we're looking at our notes. The, the first of these 10 rules that we're going to be talking about is what marks the beginning of a player's turn on the back of the card on the first panel it is written for us 
A player's turn begins when they either pick or claim a tile. So even saying call will mark the beginning of a player's turn. To claim a discard, the player must verbalize their call by letting other players know that they are claiming the discard. That is on page 14 of Mahjong Made Easy. So I think, um, Debbie, you and I were talking about when players expose tiles and when that discarded tile becomes part of their hand. You want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, that has been quite controversial. And um, I had a little uh, chat going on one of the Facebook pages a while back regarding that. And it's uh, quite interesting because somebody had asked if when you call a tile, are you allowed to put it in your rack? And once that question went out there, there were literally within maybe five, 10 minutes, hundreds of responses. And almost everybody said, no, absolutely not. You cannot do that. Well, um, after a lot of go around and reading the Mahjong Made Easy and all of the previous newsletters, I couldn't find anything that clearly stated that answer. So I had written to the league uh, and the answer that I got back was that they're going to take a, a relook at that um, question and maybe make a change uh, and post it in their bulletin. So um, I know that it was in, Michelle, you had brought it up, but it was stated in the Mahjong Made Easy uh, book. Uh, and then they did mention it again in the newsletter. Uh, and what they say is that it is preferred that when you do call and pick a tile up from the table, that you put it up on the flat part of your rack mm -hmm. and then bring up your exposures or for those that are calling it and then um, getting the exposures up first, taking the tile and putting it up on the flat part of your rack. But it is allowed to be put on the sloping or slanted part, I should say, of your rack, but not preferred. I also just want to at this point mention that that is per the National Mahjong League. I think a lot of where this gets a little bit complicated, maybe even convoluted, yeah. when, is when tournament players come in with their experience at different tournaments because tournaments will have different rules on this. I know of, I believe in Gladys's tournaments, Mahjong Madness, you cannot put that claimed tile in your rack lest you be disqualified from the current hand so a player can disqualify you for putting that claimed discard in your hand absolutely so good best to get in a uh, good practice um, from the get-go, and I think both Michelle and I agree when we teach, we teach that it goes from the table up to the flat part of the rack and make believe that it's not even allowed to go into the into your own rack um, right. on that sloping part. Yeah, I think a best practice is very yeah. good to just be, be aware when you're reaching for that claimed discard to place it on your rack, not in your rack. Mm -hmm. Also, I thought it might be good to mention that per the National Mahjong League Bulletin in 2018, they do clarify that a player is committed to taking a tile from the wall if it has been moved in any way. So, you know, part of this discussion is when, well, the, the, the rule is when is a player when is what marks the beginning of a player's turn it's either picking a tile from the wall or claiming a discard by saying call want take what have you but when you pick a tile from the wall if you move that tile in any it's way yours. it is yours you're committed to that pick if you touch it and don't move it then you can pull back and claim the previous discard if that's what you want to do does anybody have any questions about that particular rule well, I know um, the okay. Evelyn, do we call it Evelyn preferred to be called the Evelyn or Evelyn, but Evelyn, I, I call her Evelyn, Evelyn says thought that would make you dead. Well, as we had mentioned in a turn in many tournaments, you would be dead. 
She was talking about the previous. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Oh, so Evelyn, are you saying that if you rack the discarded tile, that someone can call your hand invalid or you, they could call your hand dead? Is that what you're saying, Evelyn? It's hard to, oh, it's hard to tell. That's a good point. Okay, there we go. Forever says it's hard to tell if the tile has been moved. Yeah, um, that's a very good point. Um, I think uh, we have to depend on honesty, whether someone actually moved it, especially if it's on the bottom tier and not the top one. Might be a little bit harder to see. Okay, let's see. Uh, call a tile, put it on the slanted part facing you. No, what we're saying is you should put it on the flat part of your rack with your exposure. So what the league advises is that you, when you claim a discard, you should pick the discard up and put it on the flat part of your rack and then add the tiles from your hand onto your rack with the claimed discard. That is the process that is the best practice. Yeah, and, and Evelyn mentioned again, and you can be called dead. Well, not by the National Mahjong League rules, but in some tournaments, you very well can be called dead. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let me just see here. Uh, you may have already said this, but do you have to put the tile in the rack or some people just click the top? Okay, so that is racking and we're gonna get to that. That's one of the items oh, yeah. on our list. Um, okay, discard goes on the flat, others go up to join it. I wanna talk really quick just about the window of opportunity. This kind of goes hand in hand with this particular rule. And in the 2020 bulletin, it says that saying call or picking up a tile is not a commitment and a player can change their mind. A player is committed to the call once tiles have been exposed on the rack or the claimed tile has been placed on or in your rack. That's when the commitment occurs and when the window of opportunity is closed for other players. So those, what marks the beginning of a player's turn and the window of opportunity to claim a previous discard, those all, those kind of go hand in hand. So in, uh, per the bullet, the 2017 National Mahjong League Bulletin, until a player has either racked or discarded a pit tile, the previous thrown tile is eligible to be called. The drawn tile should be put back for the next player to pick. Per the National Mahjong League Bulletin, the 2018 version, a tile is considered to be racked when it is sitting in the sloped area of the rack along with the player's other tiles. Tapping or clicking the tile is not racking, nor is it considered rack if it is merely touching any other part of your rack. So this, this visual, as you can see, this is a nice little visual, I love it, of what a racked tile is. So as you can see, the little process of this tile making its way into D position, that is what racked is. That That's is found on Sloperama's page, and I'll have that in show notes so that if you ever have a discussion with your group, about racking versus tapping and clicking. If you tap your tile on your rack, that is not racking. It has to go in the sloped part of your rack. And that is a National Mahjong League rule. So any questions about racking? Just to clarify, Per the National Mahjong League Bulletin, until a player has either racked or discarded a pick tile, the previous tile is, is eligible to be called. So if you tap, you have to put it back. Yeah. If somebody wants that previous tile. Exactly. Okay. So any questions about the beginning of a player's turn? and the window of opportunity, including racking, they kind of all go together. 
Uh, let's see, Tony says, do you have to rack if you're going to discard the tile? So if you uh, don't rack, when you discard, that will close the window of opportunity for the previously discarded tile. So sometimes players will not, they'll draw the tile from the wall, hold it in their hand. They maybe don't even tap or rack. They'll just hold it in their hand and then discard. Once it hits the table or is fully named, then that closes the window of opportunity for the previous tile. The best technique or, or process is to pick the tile from the wall, don't even look at it until it is placed in the sloped part of your rack. Then look at it, decide if you want it, and discard or keep it and discard something else. Okay, so yes, we got Tony's question about do you have to rack if you're going to discard the tile? You don't have to, but you do risk somebody stopping you from discarding that and claiming the other tile. For example, let's say that you're drawing from the wall and it's a joker and you have not racked it, you've seen it and you're getting ready to put it in your rack. Someone could call the previously discarded tile until you rack that tile, they can call the previously discarded tile. Yeah, so nothing, that, nothing worse than looking at a joker and having to put it back. It's painful. Um, <laughs> I do want to make mention of one thing while we're on here, of course. Um, it's important when you do pick a tile from the rack not to, it's not a rush to get it into your rack. I know that sometimes mm -hmm. people pick and then they just zoom it into their rack. I mean, it should be done at a normal pace so that the person previously does have a chance to get out, I'd like to call the tile. So there's got to be a little bit of a balance there. If someone taps their tile and then discards, is the previous tile still available? No. When, once, let's say a player picks a tile from the wall, mm -hmm. they don't, they, whether or not they tap or they just hold it in their hand, once they name that as a discard or that discard touches the table, the window of opportunity is closed on the previous discard. The other thing that close is the, the closure of the window is if that picked tile is actually racked. Yeah, right. So hopefully that answers the question. Uh, let's see, Cindy says, what happens, does the tile go back where it was in the wall? Yeah. That's a great question. Yes, it yeah, does. hundred percent. Yeah. And that's what Michelle was just saying. What if you pick it up and you haven't racked it and it was a joker? Oh, that's a killer. You got to yes. put that joker back. And incidentally, sometimes you might see that picked tile when somebody will interrupt the process and you have to put it back. Just because you saw it doesn't mean that you need to randomly switch it with another tile in the wall. You don't want to do that. You just put it back where it was. Very good point, wall. Michelle. Very good point. Yeah. Some people say, well, I saw the tile. Well, that that's just part of the game. Exactly. You know, I've seen it before where someone will swap it out with a random tile elsewhere in the wall. That is not part of the game. That might be a house rule, but it is not a National Mahjong League rule. For sure. Yes. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. The next three, I believe, uh, rules are all going to be about the Charleston. Has anyone ever had any issues that have come up during the Charleston? So the first one is, what is the protocol for how to pass when players have less than three tiles? So let's say one person has two tiles to pass. Well, that's not a problem. They're just going to pass blind and they're going to take one tile from their incoming pass and supplement it to their outgoing pass to make it complete. And then they will receive only two tiles. So they're going to pass two, take one to supplement their blind pass let the three go and pick up two. That's pretty simple. But what do you do when multiple people have less than three? This, uh, 
has come up on Sloparama, and I love the way he explains it. I'm actually going to read from his post what he uses as an IOU system. So for the IOU system, if everybody needs to pass blind, you just tell the player that, that you're going to owe them and you propagate it in multiple iterations until everybody has their three. So for example, if one player has one tile to pass, two players have none and one has two, the player with the most tile should begin to pass. She passes the two tiles to her neighbor and says, I owe you one more. If the player who received the two only had one tile to pass, now she has three and she can pass them. The next player who had none passes those three that she got blind. The next player passes the three to the player who started the domino effect. And the starter who owed one more to her neighbor can take that tile and pass it on. And that way everybody will have been able to pass. The other thing that has come up many times in social media is when you pass blind, can you look at the tiles? Oh, oh boy. The answer is no. No. And I love the way Tom Sloper says it. He says in regards to the blind pass, which is the way it is written in the National Mahjong League Mahjong Made Easy booklet, he says the nomenclature clarifies the rule. It's a blind pass. Therefore, you're not supposed to look at it. Some people peek. Exactly. That is not part of the process. Some people also call it stealing. It is not stealing. It is a blind pass. So those are a couple of items that I wanted to mention uh, with this particular rule. So when you do a blind pass, don't look at it. If there are players who have less than three, use the IOU process. That's the well, Evelyn, and I agree. There are uh, definitely table rules in place uh, for that uh, blind passing. Yeah, yes. I used to play in one of those groups myself, and it drove me absolutely batty when the <laughs> people would look at the tiles. But yep, um, and I believe in some tournaments you can be disqualified from the hand if you look at a blind pass as well. Yeah. But you are you would need to check with your tournament director on those rules because not every tournament is the same. Could Which be can be a little confusing. I know tournament rules don't necessarily coincide with National Mahjong League rules. So whatever group you're playing with, just make sure that you understand what their house rules are because some groups do play with tournament rules. Um, so let's see, we're going to move on to the next one. Debbie, do you want to start in on that one? This is after blind passing. Okay, so we're on stopping the Charleston and the impact on the optional across. All right, so the first Charleston is, a, is obligatory. The second Charleston is option, optional. Um, if all players agree to continue with the second Charleston, it must be completed. And this is on the National um, Mahjong Rule 2020 page 12 to 13. Mahjong made, is that the Mahjong made easy? Yes, right. Mahjong so made 12 easy. 12 to 13, 2020. Yep. Yeah. All so, right. Go ahead, I think, Michelle. I think some people think that once the second Charleston is underway, because it's optional, it can be stopped at any time. That is incorrect. Once the second Charleston is underway, you must complete it. It must be completed, all three passes. So the second left goes underway. You've got to do that full cross pass. And then the final right can be, you can option to use that blind pass in the final right. But you have to proceed with second left across and final right. 
some of these rules do touch on both etiquette and strategy, but we don't really want to tangent too much into those topics because we're going to do a, other episodes on those two topics separately. But I do want to mention that when a player stops the Charleston, it is good strategy to decline the optional cross. Agree 100%. There could be a couple of reasons why a player might stop the Charleston. And you have to hedge your bets here. You have to be shrewd in your decision of whether or not you're going to do that optional cross. That player could be between categories or between hands, but they could also be close to a winning hand. And that is, I think, what drives me to decline the optional cross. What do you say, Debbie? I agree 100% with that. Um, you know, I've seen two people uh, do one pass across and agree. Um, and then uh, after the game was over and it was discussed, they actually got a brand new tile on that one tile across, which got them one step closer to Mahjong, which wasn't too far from 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 Mahjong at that point. So why take a chance ever? Um, I mean, you know, I, I guess some people uh, I've heard say uh, to the person across for them, you know, are you close to Mahjong? Or, you know, then the person might say, oh, no, I have two hands going on. And mm -hmm. friends will be OK with that. But I think it's best just to say, no, thank you. Yeah. And incidentally, when if you are the one stopping the Charleston, you do not have to give any reason for it. There, You are not obligated to divulge your reason for stopping the Charleston. It is the prerogatory of ev every player to stop the Charleston, no questions asked. You do not have to give a reason. Some groups have a house rule where they say, if you have three tiles to pass, you must pass. That is a house rule. That is not a league rule. Yeah, or I've also heard you can only stop the Charleston if you have only one hand. Yeah, that's another house rule. Another house rule. Yeah, I know of some groups who have a house rule where they have the obligatory Charleston and the optional cross, and they don't even do the optional second Charleston. Oh, they just stop right yep. there. Very yep. you just go right across left than optional cross. Sylvie says, it true that Sophie play is not allowed. I'm not sure I understand uh, Sylvie. hand I don't think that we are that's part of our discussion uh, or we haven't um, I don't think that is a um, in our list but it does come into the conversation that we're having now because a heavenly hand occurs during or upon the dealt hand for East right. or after the Charleston. So just because it, it was brought up here by Evelyn, the heavenly hand occurs either or when East gets their drawn hand, if they actually have a complete valid hand on the card, they can declare Mahjong and the Charleston is completely waived. They just declare Mahjong and that is a heavenly hand. If they do not have that heavenly hand, that winning hand, they must proceed through the first Charleston. They can, if they can get through the first Charleston and maintain their winning hand, because they're going to have to pass tiles and then they're going to have to go across and then they could do three blind tiles in, the, in their um let's see it's right across their first left and then declare mahjong or complete the charleston and not discard 
and declare Mahjong after completing either the second optional Charleston or the optional cross, that would then be called the earthly hand. So heavenly hand is when the hand is dealt. No Charleston is done. It's waived. East declares Mahjong. Earthly hand is when the Charleston is complete and East has a winning hand. They do not discard. They just declare Mahjong. Uh, Connie had a question about um, that she thought she had heard. Oh, yeah, I read that. Someone say that if you have Mahjong during the Charleston at any time, can they declare Mahjong? Um, no, they, you, East, if East does not have a complete hand upon the dealing of the tiles, they have to proceed with the Charleston right across left. At that point, they can declare Mahjong if they're able to make it. But if they're very close, you know, they may have to break up their hand in order to do those first two passes. So the likelihood of that happening is pretty slim. But I'm sure it's probably happened at some point. But the, the first Charleston is obligatory. East, right. East must participate unless their dealt hand is a ready hand or not ready, but complete. So I hope that helps. It has never happened to me in my lifetime. It hasn't happened to me either. <laughs> it has happened to my, mom. my mom had a, a heavenly hand one time, oh. but I think it was in for Wright Patterson Mahjong. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool Mahjonging after the first round when, you know, went fine. Yeah. But that was pretty amazing. I take that. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about dead hands and disqualifying a player for numerous reasons. So there is, this is one reason why I highly recommend that you get this booklet. If you don't already have it, I think at least one player in your group should order this and keep it with the set because situations come up during games and having this handy can really save some hurt feelings maybe and one of those situations might be when a player's hand is no longer viable for sev one of several reasons this is all going to be there are several areas in this booklet where it is written on what uh qualifies for an invalid hand or hand that's no longer viable or the ability for an, a player to declare another player's hand dead. So in Mahjong Made Easy 2020, pages 21 and 22, numbers 19 through 21, has a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven ways that a player's hand can be declared dead hand may go dead for a variety of reasons. A, no such hand. The exposed tiles do not represent any hand on the current Mahjong card. You want to do each point or you want me to stop here for a minute? Oh, well, I guess you can, you can read through. Let's have you do 19 and I'll do 20 and 21. Okay. But um, I'd like to say something about that particular rule, no such hand. A lot of times that occurs right after the new card comes out yeah someone is playing a hand from the previous year's card oh, yeah for for at least the first couple of months uh you can be guaranteed that somebody's like oops i'm playing the wrong hand <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. but but yeah that is um that is definitely one reason to call someone dead and um just to make a good point right now Nobody should call their own hand dead. So many people do that and don't realize that they can continue to play. Maybe you'll find another hand, maybe you won't, but you are not to call your hand dead. Someone else is supposed to do that. And the, one of the reasons for that is because some players might not want to discard a risky tile, like a flower or a white dragon. And so they'll declare their own hand Oh, yeah, you're making it easier for them. Yeah. Right. And Randy, I do see your comment here. and We're going to get to that. Let's go through the list and then we'll talk about the penalty of um, being incorrect when calling a player's hand dead. 
Unwinnable hand. The exposed tiles indicate that a player is attempting to make a Mahjong which requires either single tiles or a pair for completion. If three or more of either the pair or single tiles have already been discarded on the tail, table, the hand may be called dead. Tiles in a player's hand cannot be counted toward the death declaration. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty you know, clear statement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that uh, obviously everybody needs to be paying attention to what's going out on the table if they're going to be able to declare someone dead in that scenario. Anytime there are singles and pairs mm -hmm. in a hand where a player has made exposures, that is when you're able to deduce what is what hand they're playing. And based on the other tiles that are in exposures or on the table as discards, you can declare that player's hand dead. If a tile is in your hand, that does not work. Say, for example, someone's playing a year hand and you know they need two white dragons and you have three in your hand. You cannot declare their hand dead because you have three of their tiles and their their hand is not going to be viable because you're keeping those dragons. Because they're in your hand, you cannot declare them dead. The, it, the, the tiles have to be visible in an exposure or in a discard so in order to be able to declare a player's hand dead. Peg says, I've been called dead with that one. Okay, that's incorrect. If somebody has a tile, now if, if that tile is in an exposure on their rack, that's yes, different. that's fine. But if it is in their hand, no, that is not fine. That's because correct. Chris is right. Chris said, you may know someone is dead because you hold their necessary tile, but you can't declare them dead. That's, That's correct, correct, Chris. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, so, oh, okay, yeah, let's go on to C, and we'll let's quickly read um, C. D and E. Yeah. Okay, exposing tiles while playing a concealed hand. Players' exposures indicate that a concealed hand is being played and tiles have been exposed erroneously. Uh, D, too few or too many tiles. Player has either fewer than 13 or more than 14 tiles. E, picking out a turn. If a player picks out a turn, the player's hand is dead. Okay, I would like to bring a couple things up on this one. Okay. Because I uh, was part of a thread that was going on in social media on a situation that occurred with a group where the wrong player discarded the first tile. When this occurs, if it is caught immediately, that player can take the tile back because technically the game does not begin until East discards the first tile. So if it is caught immediately, that player can take the tile back, there's no penalty and then East will discard to get the game started. If it is not caught until later in the game, one player, the player who discarded thinking they were East is going to have too few tiles. Right. East is gonna to have too many tiles. At that point, it was their responsibility to catch the issue and they are now not going to be able to complete their hand but it is the responsibility of the other two players to point to that out those hands dead. dead correct so the players who have the wrong number of tiles need to just be quiet until the other two players become aware it is their responsibility to declare them invalid at that point and they would stop playing and the other two players who have the correct number of tiles can continue the game very simple, Michelle, if the person with 14 tiles ends up having Mahjong and they have a tile to discard, oops. Yeah, that, that would be an oops would be <laughs> because they would pick or claim a discard. Yeah, no, that, that doesn't work. During the Charleston, if a player does not have the correct number of tiles for whatever reason, maybe they that somebody messed up the Charleston, what have you. All the tiles are, be, are to be tossed in and the game is to be started over. And of course, that's if people notice. 
sometimes somebody might forget to pick up their 14th or 13th tile. So after you get your dealt hand, maybe North forgets to pick that last tile and they're going to be short a tile. Everybody throws in their tiles and you just start over. And that's a good reason to keep all your tiles on your card before putting them up on the rack. Yes, so that's correct. easier to lose track of where you are if you start racking them right away. Uh, yes, and then also count your tiles often while you play the game. Absolutely. Let's see. Uh, let's see. We have Susan who has an etiquette question. If it applies, we'll be happy to, to answer. We actually have a Table Talk episode coming up next month all about etiquette. And yeah, that's going to be great. Yep. Yeah. So, Susan, what's your question? And we'll try to answer it for you. Uh, let's see. Oh, Dan says, I've done all three of these things, but the group extended grace as a new player. That's very nice. Yes, yeah, it is very nice. I like okay. That. Uh, let's see. We're going to get to the penalty piece, Randy, shortly. So let's talk about the next uh, two reasons why uh, a hand may be declared dead, and that's pushing out the wrong wall. If a player pushes out the wrong wall and a tile from the wrong wall was picked and racked, the player who racked now has a dead hand. The tile remains with the dead hand. That's key. That the game key. continues from the wrong wall, and then... You proceed thereafter with the correct wall. So yeah. it's going to feel a little bit Have you, Michelle? Yes. <laughs> I have never been in a game where that has happened. Yeah, it's a little awkward, but I would imagine, you, just, so. you get through the wall and then you proceed with the correct wall thereafter. Okay. If the wrong wall has been in play and someone calls Mahjong, they are entitled to the Mahjong and the person who pushed out the wall pays double. That's interesting. And I don't, I don't even know if I would remember that if it occurs. Oh my goodness. You have to have that little booklet with you. <laughs> you do. I think so. Get hand rules. When, uh, when the wrong wall has been um, in play and noticed, if the wrong wall has been in play and it is noticed, all the hands, excuse me, all the hands should be thrown in and the game should start again. So it's basically a wall game. Okay, Cindy says, so if it wasn't your fault, but you take from the wrong wall, are you dead? Per the rule here, it says, if the wrong wall has been in play, no. If a player pushes out the wrong wall and a tile from the wrong wall is picked and racked, and the player who racked, the player who racked now has a dead hand. That's if it is noticed then and there. If it is not noticed, the game continues. If it is noticed, the onus is on the player who's picking from the wall, but the penalty is for the player who pushed out the wall. This is why it's complicated and confusing. Right, because one of them is pushing out the wrong wall and the next section is picking from the wrong wall. They're both complicit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Okay, and really you need to have this booklet in order to Bring, if this ever occurs in your game, pull out this book and go to this page. If one or more players uh, pick from the wrong end of the wall, the game ceases and the tiles are thrown in. And this is when it's noticed. Obviously, if you don't notice it, you're going to continue the game. If a player picks a tile from the wrong end of the wall and racks the tile, the player's hand is dead. The other players continue playing from the proper end. If a player picks from the wrong end of the wall and discards and another player calls Mahjong, the player who picked from the wrong end of the wall pays double. So it's kind of two different situations. One is when a player pushes out the wrong wall and the game continues from that wrong wall. If somebody Mahjongs, the player who pushed out the wrong wall has to pay double if somebody wins. Then if somebody pushes out the correct wall, but the player picks from the wrong end, that's a different scenario. 
that player's hand is dead. So really the whole purpose of these rules is to make sure that the players know what they're doing. You just have to be aware and follow, you know, the proper technique and process of picking and racking and discarding, pushing out the wall, picking from the right end and things like that. You just want to be aware and careful. Michelle, um, chasing forever, which is what's it's Sam? His name is Dan. Oh, Dan. Uh, Dan says uh, that his group, and then someone else mentioned it too, turns two tiles at the end of the wall parallel so that it's clear where to pick. So now, I think that's great for um, for players who need to have that reminder. Uh, but boy, there are some groups that like will freak out if you do that because you know they the experts, I guess some of the experts don't want you to do that. So. I'd say if it's you do it in your group and it makes you happy and feel good and everybody's in agreement and it yeah. makes it easier, do it. Why not? Some people call that a tail. Yeah. If somebody has said, if somebody says after you push out a wall, if somebody says put a tail on it, that's what they mean. You just turn those last two tiles to the side. Yeah. And it's a courtesy. It is not a rule. Right. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Or a table rule. <laughs> Here's another reason why a player can be declared dead, uh, their hand dead. If a tile is discarded, resulting in mahjong, the player who picked out of turn pays for the table. So don't pick out a turn. If a player declares another player, oh, okay, Randy, here's where we get to the penalty. This is also written on the back of the card. If a player declares another player's hand dead, and the other and the players whose hand is called dead disagrees at the end of the game the challenge is resolved one way or another whichever player is incorrect at the time of the challenge that player pays the other 50 cents or 50 points so does anybody have any question about the penalty that was a change in the rule uh, at the end of last year. So it went up to 50 points or 50 yeah, cents right. if you play for money. It was 25 before. Uh, let's see. So Cindy asks, is this why walls push out at an angle? This the, the walls being pushed out at an angle is called a curtsy, and that is a courtesy. Some people also call it courtesy your wall. It's, a, it's called a curtsy. And it is a courtesy. You just push out your wall at a 45 degree angle so everybody at the table can reach it. Yeah, and it's interesting that there are some people that don't know about that courtesy push out and actually push their wall out parallel to the other walls. Yeah, that's... So that, I, always, I always take the my pusher and I'll just <laughs> nudge them out a little. Okay, Carol uh -huh. has asked about, um, what about jokers exposed on a hand to clear dead? I'm confused on which jokers can be exchanged. Any jokers made in an exposure prior to a dead hand are up for grab. Prior, it has to be before that hand went dead. So they have to have been there. Not if they were put up and then the hand was declared dead. So mm -hmm. if, if previously someone's hand who was declared dead put up an exposure and there are jokers in there, those are alive. But if that person put up a new exposure and someone said, uh, you're dead, you exposed wrong, those that new exposure is not, those jokers are not viable. And those tiles incidentally go back in your rack. Correct. Any tiles that were previously ex exposed remain and any joker therein is available for exchange. Uh, Cindy says anything during that turn is not available at that moment. Once when that when a player's hand is declared dead, any exposure made at that moment is not. And if that exposure has jokers, it is not not exchangeable. It that exposure goes back in that player's hand. And, it, and, and you do that so that there is no confusion. That's the main right. reason putting them back. Yep. Okay, so someone has an example here, Evelyn. Four three dots and jokers in it. 
I think what she's saying is that there was already an exposure of three dots and a joker. Then someone put up three ja dragons and the hand went dead. If I'm not, if I'm reading it oh, right. Because there's no uh, pung of dragons in an exposable hand this year. Right. So the dragons go back in the hand. Go back in the hand. But the, but the joker in the four three dots is yes. still up for grabs. That's correct. Okay, so yes, Peg is correct. You put the tiles back in your hand. The the exposure that triggered the declaration, those go back in the hand. Okay, okay. let's see. We have Dan asking, let's see. Uh, Susan said, player tells everyone what tile not to play. Oh, this is the etiquette. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, this is bad form. <laughs> Uh, and tells the group what hand others are building. That is really not good. And we're going to cover all of that in great detail. Yes, we are. That is called table talk, and it is bad form. So, Susan, that is... Uh, now, there's there's no rule about it, though. There's no mention of it in Mahjong Made Easy. But table talk, you can talk... You know, Mahjong is a social game, and I'll just touch on this briefly. Mahjong is a social game. There, there can be all kinds of conversation going on, but there should never be conversation about the game in play. For example, somebody's hand, any comment about somebody's hand, where are the flowers? Where are all the jokers? I can't buy a joker. Um, I, I, I don't have a pair. All those kinds of things, or I know what hand you're playing. I have your tile, and I'm not going to discard it. All those things are considered table talk and tells, and they're all bad form. So I hope that helps. And we're going to talk about that in next month's Table Talk Live episode. We're going to talk about uh, etiquette and sportsmanship, and Debbie will be with me again for that episode. That's going to be a fun one. What are we on now? Oh, oh somebody, uh, Evelyn is asking that uh, I've been, uh, where I've been, it's considered bad form to rack before the deal is ended. Um, there's no rule about that. That's another etiquette situation. Um, but quickly, just because it came up here, mm -hmm. um, the, the etic etiquette is to wait to rack your tiles until everyone has been dealt their tiles. It's kind of like, you know, don't eat until everybody has been served. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a courtesy. Yeah, this hand steam, who dealt this mess? Yeah, all those things. And we'll talk about that. Oh, good. So Susan acknowledged that. Excellent. Very, very good. So yes, hopefully you'll join us at the next. Yeah, episode. and Randy said house rules about table talk. Um, no, not really house rules, but. Um, I've never heard of house rules on it, but I've it. heard of people quitting groups because of table talk right it's it's an etiquette thing which again we will definitely be going over some good information or regarding etiquette yep let's move on to our last four uh confusing and complicated rules the ramifications for misnamed discards yes okay the ramifications for for misnamed discards and conveniently these are all printed on the back of a card. So you, if you have your the back of your card, you can read along and see what those rules are. They're also written on page 19 in Mahjong Made Easy. Yeah. A tile cannot be claimed until correctly named. Correctly named tile may then be called for an exposure or Mahjong. However, if Mahjong is called in the incorrectly named tiles, the um, is incorrectly named, the game stops. The missed caller pays the claimant four times the value of the hand and the other players do not pay. Well, that's a hefty penalty there. Yes, it is. And that's if somebody declares Mahjong. Mm -hmm. If the miscalled tile causes an invalid exposure, the calling player's hand is now 
dead and there is no penalty to the discarder. So the onus is on the claimant, the person who is claiming that discarded tile. This is one of the reasons why you want to pick up that discarded tile and put it on the, the flat part of your rack. That allows you time to validate that you picked up the correct tile, and then you can add your tiles to that to make your exposure. Once you put that claimed discard on your rack, you're committed to keeping that tile and you gotta make it work. If you made a mistake, you've gotta make it work. If you can't make it work, one of the other players can declare your hand invalid at that point. Any, any questions about ramifications from misnaming a tile you want to make sure you're naming the tile correctly and incidentally anybody at the table can correct that tile chris is asking just for clarification she says so if you pick up the wrongly named tile for an exposure you have to make an exposure with it if you can be called um if you can be called in no penalty to the discarder there okay when a tile is misnamed you cannot claim a misnamed tile. It has to be correctly named. So you're off the hook at that point. Let's say, for example, somebody names or discards a one, let's say someone discards a one bam, but they call it a flower. And you pick up the flower, but they said, no, I, I discarded the one bam. You're off the hook. You don't you don't have to, you're not committed to the one ban because it was misnamed. So the game just moves on and there's no penalty to the player. The penalty comes if someone declares Mahjong based on that misnamed tile. That's where the penalty comes in. Okay, next, the process for Joker exchanges. You wanna talk about that, Debbie? Sure, sure. Okay, um, so per the uh, Mahjong Made Easy booklet uh, 2020, we have pages 23, 4, 8, 14, and 17. So joker exchanges. Um, players must wait until their turn to redeem a joker or jokers by exchanging a like symbol, tile, or tiles from the jokers taken from the exposures. Players must pick or call first before doing the joker exchange, which of course starts, begins their turn. Yes. If you do a joker exchange before you pick or call, your hand is dead. So most important, the picking of the tile, your picking begins your turn. And that tile then gets racked <laughs> right away. And then yes. you are able to do the joker exchange. Um, once a symbol tile has been named or discarded, it cannot be taken back to make an exchange for a joker. Down is down. Once it touches the table, you say bye-bye to it. Yep. All right. During the play, jokers may be discarded and called the name of the previous discard. If a joker was used in a hand and then exchanged with a symbol tile and there are no other jokers remaining in the hand, the hand is considered to be a no joker hand. So we were talking a lot about that too, Michelle. After I mm -hmm. finish this, we'll go over some of those points. Okay. Uh, another uh, seven here, a joker cannot at any time be exchanged for a symbol tile. Only a symbol tile can be exchanged for a joker. Yeah. One of the questions I get a lot from new players when someone does discard a joker is, can't I call the joker? Well, <laughs> no. everybody would love to do that, wouldn't they? No. Uh, and then we have, there doesn't seem to be a value score for a jokerless hand. I uh, Yes, that is written on the back of the card. Um, I believe a bonus. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, the last paragraph on the first panel, bottom of the card, on the very back panel. When Mahjong is declared without a joker, double the value is paid by all. Okay. Yeah, it is on the card. Okay, that kind of goes in with the joker situation here. Okay, so we read number four, number eight, number 14 says, it is recommended that a player never touch another player's rack. This is, this goes into etiquette a little bit too. That player's rack, that's their territory. No hand, no other hands should be touching that rack or tiles. 
The player should first announce that a joker exchange is to be made. The replacement tile should be handed to the player whose rack contains the joker, and that player makes the exchange and hands the joker to the other player. This is number 14 on page 23. And Michelle, what about when someone does a joker exchange on their own rack? Okay, so that... I believe you do not have to announce it if it's on your own rack, but I'm- You don't, it's a courtesy, it is a courtesy to say exchanging my own, but you don't have to, it's not a rule. Okay. Very so good. go ahead. No, I said, I said very good. I'm happy you clarified that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and what about the importance of um, handing someone the joker and asking for them to, um, I mean, handing your, your natural tile, your, your uh, symbol tile and handing it to the person who has the joker and asking them uh, for that joker rather than putting it on the table and forgetting first to announce that you want to exchange their joker. That could be a, that could be considered a discard. That is correct. And in some tournaments, it actually is. So, excuse me, if the tile touches the table, it's considered a discard. So if you have a joker exchange, do a hand-to-hand -hand exchange. If you cannot, you know, reach across to the player across from you, for example, you announce that you are doing a joker exchange and then you can put the tile on the table and push it over to that player. But if you do not announce your intent, that tile could be considered a discard. Yes. So in, in some tournaments. That's yes, yes. Verbalize, <laughs> everything in the game should be verbal. You verbalize your, your claim of a discard. You verbalize um, the uh, exchange for a joker. You uh, verbalize... Um, question of whether or not a player's hand is dead uh, all these you know the the verbal conversation it's part of the game so just reaching in for into somebody's rack without saying anything for example that's bad form yeah and that kind of goes into etiquette again and sports yeah. so number 13 a lot i don't know if we read that but a lot of people i get that question often um, especially from newer players, can they okay. use, go ahead and read it? Use any number of jokers to complete a pun quang or quint, and the answer is yes. You do not have to have a natural tile uh, in that pun quang or quint. Correct. That's correct. Okay, so let's talk. Uh, we have two more rules. This next rule is a self-pick win by joker exchange. There are two ways that you can win when you can declare Mahjong. Either you're going to pick from the wall and, do, and have your winning tile in that picked tile, or you can pick a tile from the wall and make a joker exchange for your winning hand. Or, um, so th those are the two ways you can self-pick a win. So you either win by discard or win by self-pick. It's one or the other, one of the two. Win by discard or win by self-pick. And that includes from your own, and a joker exchange from your own rack or somebody else's, correct? That is correct. Okay. And what is confusing about that rule is it is, it is expressly written in Mahjong Made Easy on page 21, if a player's last move before declaring Mahjong is to redeem a joker from their own rack, it is considered self-pick and everyone pays the player double. Um, let's see, wasn't there something written in this book that said something about if, if a player exchanges, if, if a player picks a tile from the wall and exchanges a joker from another player's rack, that is considered a self-picked win. Right, right, it is, that is definitely. And there's, there's been some controversy over whether that would be true or not. Yes, 
but it is. It is correct. That is a whether win. it's from your own or whether it's from someone else's rack. It it uh, does give you mahjong. It is considered self picked. Yes, I'm trying to find where that is in this book. I thought I wrote it down, but I I don't readily see it. But I'll I'll make sure that it's written somewhere. I thought I had it written down on here. Yeah, Evelyn, I agree with you. That is very nice when somebody uh, gives you a jokerless hand. <laughs> <laughs> So the very last rule that we find both confusing and complicated is the simultaneous call and call exposed. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is also um, one of these situations is also called slamming or slapjack. And this was a, a really big controversy last fall on a social media uh, thread. And yeah. we went round and round. Two groups actually created a petition for the league to consider in rewriting this particular rule. So let's go over that, shall we? And then that will, this will be the last rule for our top 10. Yeah. And I think this is probably the, the biggest one, really. So this is going to be on page 20 of uh, Mahjong Made Easy. Page 20, number 13, there are several scenarios that occur for this simultaneous call, call expose. So let's go ahead and go through the details on these situations. I'll try to monitor the chat because I, I have a feeling it might light up and, yeah, you can exactly. and, and uh, read over these situations that'll come up. Do you want me to read them and you'll watch the chat? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so the first one that we have is when two players call the same tile for exposure, the player next in turn to discard is, dis is entitled to the claim except in big capital letters when the other player has started to expose their tiles. So before this whole rule changed, it was always the next person in line who got the tile. Now, this has been added to include, except when someone has started to expose. So I'm going to keep reading on so we can then go back and talk about these points. Um, B, under that same uh, rule number, if two players call a tile from Mahjong, the player next in turn to discarder is entitled to the claim, except when the other player, when the other Mahjong declarer has begun to expose their tile their tiles. Okay, C, when two players call the same tile, one for exposure and the other for Mahjong, the Mahjong declarer always gets preference. D, if a player calls at the same time another player calls and starts to expose, the tire goes to the play the tile goes to the player who is next in line to discard her. 
I can't wait to talk about each one of these points because they are quite confusing. E, if two players call the same tile, one for mahjong and one for exposure, but is it, it is an incorrect mahjong, the tile remains with the dead hand. F, if two players call the same tile for mahjong and the player next in line displays an incorrect mahjong, the call tile goes to the other player for mahjong. And the last one, and then we're going to discuss this. G, if two players simultaneously call a tile for mahjong, the player next in turn is entitled to the claim, except where the other mahjong declarer has a begun to expose their tiles. So, whoa, this one, this is a biggie one. You want to... Yes. We get any questions on that yet? No, nope, not a one. I think okay, everyone so, was just listening to the scenarios. Yeah, so 13A, um, you know, is saying two people are calling at the same time, but who gets it? We would normally love to just say the next in line closest to picking, cl next in line to east, but that's not the case because now it's going to determine, be determined by who exposes their tiles first. And that's where the whole slapjack and slamming came in. Yeah. Oh, now, um, they did add something, Michelle, in the bulletin. The rule is not meant to encourage aggressive play. Slamming tiles or racing to put up an exposure is poor sportsmanship, not supported by the league. So yeah. they did add that. I was hoping they would have done something different with the rule, but you know, this is what they did, and we've got to respect their, uh, you know, the way they do it. So uh, I'm interested to see if anybody has any comments about that. Okay. Yes, Randy's asking, exposing tiles or starting to expose. They say starting to expose. So here's here's the way I can here's the way I I have for me this yeah. is how I summarize this in one sentence all of these situations are based on whether or not it is due to a delayed response or simultaneous actions so for example, if a tile is discarded and two players at the same time say call, and then one player it starts to expose at that moment, whoever gets the tile up first or whoever makes the exposure or starts to expose, they get the tile. That's if it is a simultaneous call and one player starts exposing they're going to get the tile now if there is a delay where the next player in line hesitates and the other player says call and exposes tiles the player who delayed is out of it loses the tile yeah and martin said if you snooze you lose <laughs> that's what the rule covers you snooze, you lose. That is why the league wrote that or clarified that ruling because they say that all players should be on alert. If if you need a tile, you should know you need that tile and speak up if you need it. Yeah. So what this means, the bottom line is, especially if you're new to the game or if you tend to be a slower player for whatever reason, if you feel that you you may want that tile and you just need a minute to think about it you should say wait you don't have to say call take i want that just say wait if you say wait that should stop the process of the game and no other player should be exposing or calling or anything exactly Next in line should say wait exactly i need a minute right because silence does not speak <laughs> What? There's no, there's no words in silence. Nobody knows what you're thinking. So you have to be verbal in the game. Very, very important. Um, <laughs> I agree it's bad sportsmanship with the, the whole racing thing. Um, I see a few comments here. Yeah, uh, I, I knew this was going to come up here. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. It definitely sounds like a race. And that's not what they intended. But unfortunately, I think that in some cases, that is what has resulted. And this yeah. is why I, I'm so adamant about this particular rule and, and how, it, how it is used in real life. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I, I'm not a fan of it myself. Um, right, right. Okay, so I'm, be... I'm trying to read. Let's see. So can you expose before oh. picking up? Oh, what? No, no, go ahead. Can, which, um, which, Chris, off further. Yeah, Chris asked, can you expose before picking up the discard? Not nice, but can you? Yes. Yes. The yes. preferred process is to pick up the discard and place it on the flat part of your rack. That is actually written in the Mahjong Made Easy booklet. The preferred process is to pick up the claimed discard, put it on the flat part of your rack, then take your tiles from your rack and add it to the rack. And make the sure you call the tile, verbally call the tile. Yes, yes. Pick it up. Yes. Um, what Cindy says is wait in the rules. Yeah. Uh, you know, weight is, well, you verbally have to say something. So if you're not sure if you're going to call a tile by saying weight, it stops everything in its tracks. Nobody yes. will take any other action. So let me just add this. If a player, because the rule is that you need to verbalize your claim on a discard, that is a rule. That you is must rule. verbalize a claim for a discard. That is written on page 12 oh let's see wait a minute that's not where it is sorry it is written there it is page 14. to claim a discard the player must verbalize their call by letting other players know that they are claiming that discard they may say call take or i want that the claimant must then expose on the rack the pung kong quinter sextet which has been completed by the discarded tile. When it is ex when exposing, it is preferable to place the called tile on top of your rack before taking the tiles from your rack to make the exposure. If a player exposes without calling, technically they're playing out of turn and, and can be their hand can be declared dead because they played out of turn. That's the way I would approach that. And to me that might keep people from slamming. You've got to verbalize your claim on that discard. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather people shout it out and just be verbal. I mean, you know, somebody said here, we're not mind readers. And that is the truth. We are not mind readers. Yeah. All you have to do is say, hold up. I need a minute. Whatever it is you need to say. Yes. To, to yes. Figure out um, what you're going to do. Yeah. So Evelyn is saying, what was the reason for the change anyway? The interesting thing is, this wasn't a recent change. This has been in the rules, I think, since, was it, is it 2017? 2017? I think it was 2017. Right? Okay. I think it's written on uh, Slow Yeah. I, yeah. It's been, um, been there a couple of years already. And then. And they just recently clarified it. But the reason that it was written is because what I've been told is that the league was getting numerous complaints that people were too slow and there and and that players who were diligent or uh, aware and acting on a, a tile they wanted, they outed themselves by by saying call and exposing tiles. They needed protection, according to the league, and that is why the rule was written to protect a player who was aware of what was being discarded and the player who delayed, you know, then can't later say, well, wait a minute, I'm next in turn and I want that. Well, it's too late if somebody already just said call and started to expose right. the league the really the only person. that player. So sure. really what it means is that, especially if you're new to the game, and I, I know I said this a moment ago, but I want to repeat it. If you are a new player or if you are typically slow and you have an interest in a tile, potentially just say, wait, I yeah. need a minute. And that will give you the time and it could stop somebody from slamming or uh, call expose. 
you know, a simultaneous call exposed situation. Yeah, and then um, we have here uh, a <laughs> that seems to make sense, but the exposure rule seems anti newbie. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is anti newbie, um, and and hopefully there will be people that are very understanding of the newbies. Yeah, <laughs> at the table. I think grace comes in at oh, some yeah. point um, with, you know, I think it depends on the group. And if if you are equally yoked, let's say if you're playing with players who are uh, at the same level, you know, you're going to, there's going to be some grace there. And, you know, players who are all advanced, you know, that this rule is not that big of a deal. But if you're playing with people, if you're playing in a mixed group where there are beginners and advanced players alike, then you may run into this situation. Yeah, and absolutely. this rule might actually come in. So make sure you have this book so that you can go over how to handle it going forward to move the game along. Uh, let's see here. Somebody's Marsha said just adding just to add levity. Sounds like the writers had a little bit too much to drink. <laughs> and they, um, <laughs> Or either they had too many lawyers giving legal advice. Yeah, I read that. That's fun. That was good. Uh, okay. Seems uh, to foster poor sportsmanship in practice. Yes. And we can talk more about this in next month's episode as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, so this is only, this only apply, Chris says, this only applies if both called simultaneously. So there are different situations for these rules. If there's an ex a simultaneous call and one player exposes in addition to the call. Whoever exposes their tiles is going to get the tile. Pardon me. So that is when there's a true simultaneous two players at the same time saying call and one exposes. Whoever exposes gets the tile. If there's a delay the player who exposes the tiles will get the tile. Yeah. Um, now, if there is a situation where a player, and that applies also to when both players simultaneous call Mahjong, if both players say Mahjong at the exact same time and one player starts to expose their tiles, that whoever exposes their tiles gets the tile. Exactly. This is where the whole controversy comes from is that the quick draw wins and this is this is where it can get heated because some people are not well some people are not as quick uh, yeah you know their their dexterity their their yeah. uh, movement is not as fast i mean yeah. i you know i've i've played with people that have really you know that are um you know arthritic even and they have a hard mm -hmm. time getting their tiles up and i mean you know whatever happened to compassion and like you said great um you know i mean i don't know i just uh, have a hard time with that rule i have a very hard time with it so. i'm very passionate about it um and and i'll stand my ground on it now i'll teach the rule when i teach the game i teach the rule but I do mention in my own group that we do not enact that. We don't play by that rule. Next in line gets the tile in my group. That's the only house rule that we have. Next in line gets the tile. But I'm the thing is, it. It, is, it is rare when there's an, a, a, a simultaneous call, call exposed. It's rare, thankfully. And from what I hear, it is rare that it happens. But it does happen, and it, it can be hurtful. Uh, so I just want to go back here because Randy asks, is weight in the rules? No. But if a player says weight, it should be honored. Nobody should be pushing their way through the game. If somebody says weight, players need to honor that, really. It's not a rule. It's just sportsmanship. And we'll oh, talk here, um, JL Fantozo. If I pronounced it right, as a good point. If not simultaneous, but the next in line calls second, then what? Okay, is say that again. Where? Where's? Let's see. Um, I know. I think I'm, mine is way down because you had read Randy's, which was up far. Yeah, I, I was trying to scroll up to see if we missed anything. 
uh, J.L. Fantazzo, excuse me if I'm not pronouncing it right, says, if not simultaneous, but the next in line calls second, then what? Is it still who exposes first? Well, the that exposure first thing comes with simultaneous calls. So um, in this case, if it's not simultaneous, the person next in line gets that title. If I'm reading that correctly. Michelle, you want to? Okay, let me affirm? just look at it. We're talking about, it says, if not simultaneous, but next in line calls second after a delay. So there was a delay. Then what? Is it still who exposes? Yes, that's the rule says if the player next in line delays and another player calls and starts to expose, they get that tile. The delay by the player next in line. Oh, I was reading it differently. I didn't read the delay. Yeah. yeah, no, they lose out. That's the whole you, you snooze, you lose situation. And Marsha says it rewards aggressive behavior, not good, decent playing. A lot of people feel that way. Yep, a lot of people feel that way. Um, let's see here. Simultaneous call for discard and exposing tiles. What if one calls, okay, Bonnie says, what if one calls and the other says, wait, at the exact same moment? If okay. no tiles are exposed, then next in line will get the yeah, tile. Okay. The issue is when a player starts to expose tiles. That is the issue, I believe. Um, find a new group <laughs> if wait isn't honored, Dan says. Yeah. Yeah. And then J.O. asked again, so I'm not sure we answered her question. What if calls second, but no exposure? If the play, okay, if a player, if a tile is discarded and a player says call, but the player next in line says wait, and no tiles have been exposed, next in line gets the tile okay i think that's what she was asking yeah the issue is if there is a call expose it's a it's like a it's like the mind and a physical action at the same time that's the differentiator they call expose so they say call and they flip up tiles that's when it's too late for someone to say, wait, when they start exposing tiles, it's too late. Um, okay, so Randy says, if not simultaneous, the first pay player who calls wins. No, if it is not simultaneous, it's going to be about the exposure, about exposing tiles, I believe. If two players say, Mahjong, and nobody exposes tiles, the player next in turn gets the tile. But if somebody says, if two players at the exact same time say Mahjong and one of them exposes their tiles, whoever exposes first gets the tile and gets the win. Gets the win, right. That's where the whole slamming idea comes in, or that term. That's where the term came from and where the idea of it's a race, that's where that comes from. So it, I don't think this controversy is gonna go away. No. It's not gonna go away, unfortunately. I agree, and Sylvia, it is a confusing okay. rule. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, I'll be real. The rule is confusing and it's a bad rule, Sylvie says. A lot yeah, of people feel that way. Yeah. Some people agree with it. Some people believe that it protects the player who is um, on alert and aware and with it. You know, it, it rewards players who are, um, you know, um, into the game and ready to react. It, it mm -hmm. hurts the players who are slower. And for whatever reason, that's just the way it is. And it is a rule. So 
you decide to either abide by that rule with your group and let everybody know that you're going to abide by that rule, or you create a house rule and let everybody know that you have a house rule that waives that rule. You just have to make it known so everybody knows how, how what to expect when you play the game in yeah. any given group. And Ju Judy said, what if someone hollers, wait, how long do you have to wait before another person can call the tile? I mean, that again is a courtesy thing. You know, yeah. nobody should be taking a very long time to make a decision. And somebody in the group is liable to say, you know, come on, you got to make a decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes people will jokingly do the, the da 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 da. Yeah, exactly. Da, 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 exactly. You know, yeah. that whole thing. Or that's, any, usually oh, what, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's usually what I hear Jeopardy, the Jeopardy song. Yeah, the Jeopardy thing. Uh, let's see. Evelyn said, can um, sort of play one lady played with a three minute before she even picked a tile, then another three minutes to make up her mind. In that in that situation, <laughs> I'll repeat what Dan said earlier, you might want to find a different group. Yeah, if exactly. If you continually <laughs> delay a game, there may be, you know, a, a better group for that particular player, maybe a more social group or um, a group with players who are more like-minded or uh, on equal footing. Um, they may be playing with advanced players who prefer to play faster. Yeah. And now, that's kind of a situation. confusing. So you must expose first when calling, period? No. Well, not if you verbalize it. No. I want the tile. Hold up. Yeah. Yeah. The the rule in the in Mahjong Made Easy is you must verbalize your call. You must verbalize your claim on a discard. You cannot just throw up your tiles and and let that start your turn. That is not the start of a turn. That's why the very first rule we talked about was what marks the beginning of a player's turn. The call on a discard or a pick from the wall. You cannot just whip up your tiles and start your turn. That's playing out of turn. You've got to verbalize a call. You've got to verbalize your claim on a discard. Randy says egg timer on a wait. <laughs> so yeah. Randy we'll have says, egg timer. I have that in my golden rules, actually. <laughs> yeah. So Randy just wants to clarification here. Confusing. So you must expose first when calling. No. You call, you make a verbal claim on the tile, and then you pick up the tile, put it on your rack, add your tiles from your rack to that discarded tile to complete your exposure. That is the that is the preferred process. And that is written in the in the book. It is not a rule. It is the the preferred process. The rule is that you must verbalize your claim on that tile, then act. You don't act first, then call. You call, you say call, take I want that. Then you take the tile, put it on your rack, add your tiles to complete the exposure and go forward from there. You don't just throw up your exposure and let that be your turn. No, that, that's not how it was intended to be. Uh, let's see. Um, Somebody said, I don't think that the, the call thing. Hi, Peg, thank you for coming. Uh, let's see. I'm uh, sorry, Debbie. Marcia said, I don't think that slam thing applies to calling Mahjong, but it does. Uh, it yeah, people... that is when two players simultaneously say Mahjong right. and one player exposes at the same time. Same thing applies, that same yep. scenario. That rule applies. applies. That's the differentiator um, is when a player calls and exposes at the exact same time. So the rule, and uh, Marcia says, this rule would require a referee to determine who calls first. It's confusing. Carried further, what if both people expose at the same time? That is when next in line will get the tile. That, that is going to be, I believe, um, let's see here. Which one is that? Uh, this is um, 
page 20, uh, page 20, number 13. Uh, when two player. players call the same tile for exposure, the player next in turn to the discarder is entitled to claim. Oh, no, no, that's not it. When uh, here it is. This when is the one. Call the same tile for exposure. The player next in turn to discarder is the, entitled to the claim. And then they added the accept when the other player has started to expose. Okay, this is the one you and I went round and round on just yeah. to make sure we understood it. Um, this, okay, so this is the one Marsha is talking about the rule where when both people expose at the exact same time. And this is also, I just want to note that they both said call. If one of them didn't say call, they're out. You've got right. to verbalize your claim on the tile. We don't want a shouting match going on though. No, definitely. You both have to verbalize for the call for the tile. Then per number 13 on page 20 D, it says here, if a player calls at the same time, another player calls and starts to expose. This is both players calling and starting to expose at the same time. That's not written in there. Those are my words. The tile goes to the person next in line. If it is truly simultaneous call expose, all in one fell swoop, same time, player next in turn gets the tile. Michelle, I'm sure you will agree that this is all extremely confusing. And I can see by Estelle's, the comment that came in last there, it is, <laughs> it is a lot to absorb. Okay, hold on, let me get there. I see something caps from Randy. If you are not next in line and you call a tile before someone else does, you can call a tile at any time and when a tile is discarded you can say call that's fine but you don't want to just expose tiles without saying call and if you say call and another player says wait you need to defer to the next in line if you say call and start to expose and then a player says wait then that player saying wait is too late I hope that makes sense. That's the way the rules are written. Uh, okay, so you're welcome, Katie. Thank you so much for coming. I know this one went long, but it's it's important. Uh, okay, now final. Let's make this one the last comment that we'll cover for now. Um, we may need to do another another one a repeat episode. We'll probably repeat this annually. <laughs> um, Estelle said, but you're contradicting yourself because you are saying both call pick up, expose, and whoever exposes gets the tile if calls are simultaneous. So there's, there's not a contradiction in these rules. Where it gets complicated is when it is simultaneous. And if the simultaneous call has one player with an action where they are exposing tiles. That's the differentiator. The player who exposes tiles will get the get the tile if it is a simultaneous call. I, I hope that helps Estelle. It's when it's simultaneous that it is uh, the most confusing because then they've added the expose part to the rule. Yeah, that's what's made it so controversial let's put it that way really. yeah it, it is it's complicated and and it is controversial both uh oh. jocelyn says but your turn begins when the call tile is racked no nope. your turn begins when you claim a discard you don't have to get yeah, it's the claim. verbal call or pick from the wall those are the two things that start your turn but your turn can be interrupted there's that whole window of opportunity that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you call a tile and you don't rack it or put it on your rack, there's still a window of opportunity on the previously discarded tile and a player can say, wait, unless you started exposing your tiles 
or unless you racked that tile. Right. That's the thing. Okay, then someone said, what about Mahjong? It's the same thing. If two players say Mahjong at the exact same time, but one player exposes tiles, whoever exposes the tiles are, is going to get that winning tile. Yeah, That's the way the rule is written. And Marsha asked, doesn't the book say specifically about calling Mahjong? Yes, it does. However, they did um, further amend the question a little bit in their question and answer uh, bulletin. So mm -hmm. those bulletins are pretty important because they add little specifics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I, Bonnie's asking if you could do a visual. I, I might try to do a video on it. Those are... Uh, they're fun to do, but they're challenging because I act as every person and uh, I have to put on my actor hat and uh, I'll, I'll add that to my pipeline. Oh, Michelle, you look so good moving around <laughs> your table. I have to tell you. This whole rule, I'll, I'll try to um, act it out in a video uh, and I'll, so I will add that to my pipeline. Oh, uh, I love that now. Um, for that recommendation I don't know it ended up but after a tile is discarded can other players shuffle the tiles on the table whoa <laughs> well i i've seen players do that and that goes into etiquette and uh bad form i mean if you're doing it out of poor sportsmanship it's not good but if you're just pushing tiles out to push out a wall you know that's part of the game you don't want to be rude about it or, or, or do it in a uh, way to intentionally mess someone up. But there's no rule that says you must leave discards where they're laid. Right. There's no rule about that. You've got to be able to push out the walls. Uh, let's see. Somebody said, what if, uh, but if a call, if a call would mean Mahjong for somebody that is the person that definitely gets it correct. Okay, so if there's a if there is a simultaneous call for an exposure and mahjong, mahjong gets it. Always mahjong yes. wins out. Mahjong wins out, and then if two players say mahjong at the same time, whoever exposes their tiles first gets the tile. All um, right, Sylvie, we didn't mean to upset you with this. When where oh makes me very upset yeah. yeah yeah i dislike it too sylvie i'm with you i yeah. i just like it okay when was the last bulletin sent out january if you purchase your card from the league you will get the bulletin you automatically become a uh signed up on their newsletter mailing list if you purchase your card from a uh, Hadassah or some other fundraising organization, and they do not submit that list to the league, then you will not get the bulletin. So you want to make sure that that fundraising organization submits their list to be entered for the newsletter. Good point, Michelle. Yeah. Uh, what was, okay, so let's see. Uh, what if you have a young helper in one of your videos to dress up like, uh, dress up my little doggy? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe, I don't know. You um, probably, yeah, okay. Uh, actually, you both have done an excellent job. Okay, thank you, Judy, very much. You think you get the picture. All right, I think we can we can close the episode on that. So all right. thank you so much for your patience through the technical difficulties. And thank you for joining us on this live stream. Debbie, thank you so much for helping me cover all these points because it, they are all very confusing and complicated. And I so appreciate you having me on your Table Talk Live again. I look forward to future episodes. It's always wonderful sharing in these experiences with you. Yeah, well, I'm honored to have you here with me. Thank Until you. the next episode where we're going to be talking next month, first Tuesday Yay. of next month, about etiquette and sportsmanship. Oh, so, one of my favorite topics. Favorite two topics. Yep. Yeah, we'll see you then. Thank see you, Debbie. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. So thank you again very much for to my moderators for helping manage chat. And again, I just want to say thank you and apologize for the technical difficulties at the beginning. I'll make sure that the repost is edited and it appears to run smoothly. 
If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click that little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next episode, may all your picks be keepers.